so 605 is a um, TV and analytics measurement company that takes aggregated data um, from set-top boxes at the household level and uses that to develop insights and to drive um, ex better. Um, do you want to? Okay. Do you want me to use it, or should I? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So we utilize household level, census level, set-top box data to help drive better um, advertising scheduling and in, to develop insights for our clients, which are normally brands or programmers. Hi, John. Okay. All right. So, I mean, one of the things that really stands out about what you're doing in the United States, and at the moment it is just the U.S., is that it's national in the sense that you have multiple MSOs feeding set-top box data into your, you know, your warehouse. And also it's independent, so instead of a marketer going to each operator and getting that data, they can come to you and analyze data from all those different MSOs. Exactly. I mean, that, that sounds fairly revolutionary. I mean, how significant is that kind of model? Um, well, we, you know, we came from, from cable TV ourselves and had really 10 years' experience of aggregating 100% of the set-top box data on the cable system that we managed. Um, so we have been doing it for 10 years. And then being in the industry for so long, in the U.S., you know, back in the day, it was much more similar to Canada, family-run companies that all knew each other. So having the relationships in the industry was helpful, um, when, uh, particularly when you're talking about an area like data, which cable operators, you know, BDUs in the states, um, satellite and, and cable, they understand that they have value in this information, but they're not always quite sure what to do with it or who to trust with it. So that, you know, that aspect is helpful. Obviously aggregating, you know, enough to represent a national footprint. And then I think the key thing that's most important to us is being independent in the sense that we don't sell any advertising. So we're not going to give people recommendations and then say, and by the way, you know, I can, sell, I can sell you that advertising myself. So our goal really is to help people determine better who they're targeting and help them reach those targets by utilizing viewership data, as we said, that's, that's national and is at a household level, so in the tens of millions. So is the marketing industry in the U.S. using you for national footprints and campaigns, or do they come to you and maybe say, we just want to go in a certain territory or just use one operator out of the, the several that you, you have data on? So we, we, we don't utilize individual operator data back, particularly to the programmers, because that is one of the fears of the BDUs, is that if you provide viewership data and then you're in a renewal situation with a programmer, that they're going to use your data against you. So normally we wouldn't do um, anything unless the actual BDU themselves were looking for insights, which does happen. Um, it is utilized for, to help drive operating decisions by the BDUs. But um, most brands, it really depends. They may want to target a specific geographic area, and in that case, we would make sure that there was enough mix in that area that they weren't able to back um, append it to a particular BDU. But generally, it's a, more around whatever problem they're trying to solve. So if it's a broad-based brand that's looking to do you know, national awareness and look at that and then couple it maybe with call to action at a local level to drive you know, SKU-specific um, activity or particular geo activity, they would, they would ask us for both. Okay. I mean, do you think that model could work in other markets like Europe or even Canada? I mean, Canada, of course, have their own initiative to have a shared set-up box audience measurement system. Yeah. And I believe there are, there are ambitions to sort of expand that into a kind of an analytics kind of platform maybe. But, you know, is the scope for you to do this kind of commercial model somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Canada, again, being vertically integrated like the states when people owning programming and the BD, you know, being a distributor as well is really helpful. Um, you know, data is data, so you can apply it in any way. It doesn't, it's not language specific. And then, um, you know, we've had a lot of interest in Europe. I think the NVIDIA announcement um, in December, the purchase of NVIDIA and their capability to utilize at the satellite level um, to do addressable advertising also helps kind of fuel the, the interest across, really across the world. Um, but particularly Canada, I think you're well poised and with the government, you know, helping to sort of get everyone to work and play well together. I think that's actually, if it's executed well, can be really additive in speed to market. I mean, would it be crazy to try and create a North American data pool and rather than split Canada and America, given that some marketers look at it as a kind of a single market almost? Yeah, I think it's easy to combine data sets, particularly if they're sourced from, you know, from, from similar places. The challenge with set-top box data, having spent you know, nearly 10 years getting it to scale at Cablevision, is that 
you know, cable operators aren't generally, um, it's not their primary business. So. Something odd going on back there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of uh, Some party kind going of on outside. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not easy to do. It's complicated. Um, when you're starting to use data for week over week, month over month, year over year analysis, that data has to be clean. It has to be gathered the right way. For privacy issues, it obviously has to be stored and managed the right way. And so where you get into challenges is because providing data is not a normal day-to-day um, -day activity that most uh, you know, BDUs have, have engaged in in their past, simple things that you might do on a cable system could actually impact the, the viewership, right? A package changes, a pricing model gets adjusted, and a, and a network moves into a different area of the spectrum or a channel, a channel change, and then all of a sudden that may impact the viewing. If you're not aware as an operator and you're doing measurement, you know, you're, you're looking in that, at that particular network for, for viewership, for example, you've now sort of created an anomaly in the data that ideally you'd want to know about in advance. So some of those types of things are, are kind of live and learn experiences as you're working with the data you know, more regularly and then going back to the well many times for comparative analysis. So in the US, what are the main uses that marketers are making of your set-top box data? So we use it to help with planning, with scheduling, um, with targeting and segmentation, and then really media optimization. So um, for example, we have a retail, um, sorry, not a retail, a travel company that was looking to see what their brand um, advertising was doing to help with propensity to purchase and just the overall impact of brand advertising. And so we worked with them on a campaign, we help them identify and confirm their target segment and to place media. And coming out of that, you know, a variety of different research, we coupled it with first and third party data that we had acquired from them and from other people. We looked at about 131 million households in the states who ran the advertising against it. And what we took away for them was a determination that, first of all, the, the campaign was much more effective against men than women, which they hadn't known. Secondly, that of the two creatives we tested, one was significantly uh, outperformed the other by probably three to one. And then the third thing that we learned um, in that situation was that, what was the third thing that we learned? We learned that they, it was men, that, oh, um, what was the third? Oh, I know, sorry, <laughs> that, that the long tail networks, this was actually the most interesting element, the long tail networks actually outperformed significantly the broader base networks that they utilized in this particular campaign for this particular target. So that's not to say that you know VH1 and BET in this circumstance always outperform ESPN and TBS, but for this target, for this message with this creative, they actually were able to optimize their media and spend less because the long tail networks performed better. So they would take that information again and utilize it to test and learn on their next campaign. Should I continue down this road or should I try something different? So this was data enhanced buying of traditional linear spots, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So it's what we're, we're calling sort of optimized Optimize linear on over, linear. over indexing, finding over indexing day parts and channels, that kind of thing. Exactly. And then also coupling with other, you know, with digital. We like to do, if we can, um, test and learn in situations where we have a presence of digital advertising in the household or not, right? And then look at exposed to TV, exposed to TV and digital, exposed to only digital, exposed to only TV, and have the four quadrants and then test and learn that way. So you really, we couple, depending on the capability of the, you know, of the seller in that situation, we can make it as convoluted and crazy as you want or straight up, you know, did they see the ad, did they act upon the ad? Well, one of the challenges marketers always mention is uh, getting that media modeling right, the mix where digital and TV and what impact TV has on digital and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you all go in some way to giving those answers, are yeah, you? Yeah, we do that. And that's, again, the opportunity if we, because we have a data set in-house that's um, got a lot of significant information about digital and digital ad exposure, and then you couple that with the TV um, analytics that we're doing because we have the household level addressable information or set-top box information. Okay, and then in terms of addressable, one of the things that uh, Group M said when we did our conference in London in December, apart from the fact they wanted addressable, they said very specifically, we don't want complexity, digital is complex enough, we want addressable to be far less complex. And what can you do to make sure that addressable doesn't just make everything life harder? Well, I think, to quote Erwin, there's, sometimes you can target too much, right? It should be simple to say, we want to go somewhere 
a little more specific than age and gender, right? But not to the point where you're targeting yourself to death and the incremental benefit of targeting isn't worth the level of effort and the complexity that it requires. So to start really thinking through the different layers um, and what people are trying to do to move the needle and at what point does it just become overly, overly convoluted and not worth doing. So helping people understand that again through test and learn, starting maybe broader and then refining and refining the targets down to the point where, you know, like we spoke yesterday about postal codes here, you know, there's three or four hundred homes per postal code. Is that worth targeting? Probably, and you can do that without it being overly complex. They've done it in direct mail for years, and it's done in digital as well. So, okay, now we've got time for some a couple of questions. If anyone's got any, so just put your hand up if you have. And I'll just ask in the meantime, just very quickly, how how far could we go with better optimization of linear buys? Could we offset the day when we need addressable? I mean, given what Erwin just said, it sounds maybe not the pressure's getting too high, but... No, I think, I think you need both. I mean, op optimizing linear is a no-brainer. You shouldn't, be, we have had a whole discussion yesterday about waste and how much waste there is. You have to optimize your linear schedule um, in order to retain people's interest and attention in TV. But it, people have gotten very comfortable with, with advertising and buying digital the way that they do and being able to to push a specific impression against a specific audience who should be able to do the same on television. So, but again, with, with types of technology that are coming out, the things that Erwin talked about, um, the opportunities that NVIDIA represents, I think it, it, it actually gets people there hopefully more quickly than, than back in the day. Okay, right, audience questions, do we have any? Now we'll see if I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, looks like we've answered everything, so you must have done a good job there. So, um, okay, well, thank you very much, Christine. Thanks. Lovely to see you again.